The architecture is now in place for the block to move. The next thing we're going to do, though, is set the block status to tell whether or not it's allowed to move again. Now, in our case, we're just building a one-time move block. So after this point, the block's not going to move again. Let's open up Kismet. And I'm going to grab everything we have here. And let's put all this in a comment. And let's call this block movement now, off just to the side of this, let's set up a new area. Now, we're going to start off with a remote event. So, go to New Event and choose Remote Event. And we're going to give this a name of Set Move Status. Now, the next thing we need to do is check and see what object we are speaking to. Which, <laughs> exactly which of the interp actors, because you could have multiple ones. So, let's go to New Condition, Comparison and choose a compare objects and we'll connect this in now what are we comparing we're going to compare our moving block against the interp actor and we'll talk about that a little more here in just a second so let's grab our moving block which I've already got a named variable for that so I'm just gonna duplicate save a little bit of time and we've got one here for our interp actor I actually wanna fix this to make this whole thing nice and generic we'll actually take care of that now so Let's paste this in, and what we're doing is we're checking to see if whatever is stored inside of moving block happens to be interp actor 3. Now, if that's true, then we're going to set the move status for, the, for interp actor 3. If it's not, say if we had multiple blocks, all we would do is add another compare objects that would compare the next block. Uh, against moving block and then the next one and so on so each time you add an extra block you're gonna have to add an extra compare objects you can think of this in the world of programming like a series of if else statements so that if it's this block then we're gonna do this else check to see if the, if it's this block and if it is do this else check to see if it's this block and if it is do this etc and so on now I'm gonna take out all of these interp actor threes I just noticed that we left here in our matinees we're going to replace these with copies of our moving block named variable. That way, once again, this is left generic so that we could pass in any one of what could be multiple moving blocks. And it just cleans that up. Okay, now back over here. We've got our compare objects to make sure we know who we're talking to. And again, just to kind of drive the point home, if we did have multiple blocks, our end result would probably look something kind of like this where if the block that we're comparing the block that we just moved wasn't interp actor 3 we would connect in another compare objects which would connect which would actually compare it against another interp actor maybe number 4 and then check again to see if it was number 5 and you just do this for all of the different blocks that you had and eventually you would find the block that did just get moved and you would use the true output to uh, do something to it. Now let's talk about what it's going to do. So if A is equal to B, then what we're going to do is set a Boolean value. So let's go to new action, set variable, Boolean. And we're going to create a named variable for our B can move TV0. Remember that? Way over here. We set this up early on. This controls whether or not that particular trigger volume is allowed to move. Now, we were checking against that very, very early when we actually touched the trigger volume in the first place. We said, hey, they've touched the trigger volume, so obviously they want to move the block. Can they move the block? Remember, we've got the B can move TV0. I'm just going to copy that. We're going to paste that in right here because that's going to be our target. And now what we're going to do is set this to a value of false. So let's right click, create a new Boolean variable which already has a value of false. So what this is doing is saying, all right, we've now moved this block, we don't want to be able to move it again, so we're setting B can move TV0 to false. All right, now moving on from here, we're just going to activate a remote event to reset our camera. So we've got a new action, event, activate remote event, which we're simply going to call reset camera because early on we actually took away control of the camera and passed it on 
to a camera that is currently attached to the block. So now we need to set up the control system that will pass that control back over to the player's camera. However, at this point, let's go ahead and uh, call it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and close Kismet, go ahead and save your level, and then we will continue after this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>